I don't think there's really anybody in the audience that don't know Dave Patterson and Minnie Bolster, so it doesn't, this doesn't require a very long introduction. But I've known Dave for about 13 years. Um, many of you know him professionally as he was an educator, a teacher at Saratoga Springs High School. He still te he was retired, he still teaches at SUNY Albany, and he's also um, one of the business partners of Saratoga Tours along with Charlie Kenzel. And he also served on our board for six years and two years as president of the History Museum during our renovation period. Now, Minnie Bolster, Minnie is a native Saratoga, so she's been here a lot longer than Dave has. Minnie has been collecting Saratoga ephemera and collectibles longer, um, or at least for, what, 40 years? 40, 50 years, for 50 years. Minnie's collection is outstanding and rivals it and is, if not better than that we have here at the History Museum. Uh, Minnie's held every position that you could possibly have on our board of trustees with the exception of vice president. vice president. It was either vice president or secretary. And tonight she's here to talk to um, Dave a little bit about collecting what her, um, and what her favorite um, items of Saratoga memorabilia are. So I'd like to introduce my good friends, Dave Patterson and Minnie Bolster. <laughs> Well, we would like to, uh, to start off by thanking uh, Jamie and the, uh, the Board of Trustees here at the History Museum. And we also, of course, want to give a big thank you to my business partner, Charlie Kanzel, who was the muscle who carried all of this down here today. <laughs> Any other thanks we want to give? Well, I do, yes. Of course, of course, my family. I couldn't be here without them. And I have lots of friends, and I see a lot of you here, and I thank you for being here and being my friends. But I have one friend I have to mention. Um, you know, Dave kissed me about not collecting anymore. I said two years ago I wouldn't collect anymore. But I have a friend who didn't believe me. She, uh, she worked part-time at the Saratoga Room in the library. Most of you know her, Victoria Garlanda. If it wasn't for her, I would not be collecting anymore. <laughs> she is just such a good friend. And she does all these crazy, wonderful things for me. And she brings me lots of things, which I might get myself if I was still able, but I'm not. So I just, again, want to thank Victoria for all she does for me. And interestingly enough, Minnie, uh, this is the slide that we're looking at now. I and, can't see it, but that's Well, right. no, it will be in a minute. I forgot to give Charlie the signal. Well, if you want me to talk about that slide? Okay. Well. Oh, wait, before you do. How many people were at the brown bag luncheon that Minnie and I were at earlier this year? Oh, okay. okay. And remember all the things she talked about that she collected? So I go over to see her this summer and thinking... The collecting is over. And the first thing I hear is, oh, Dave, you want to see this new thing that I have? <laughs> what new thing? Well, she's not done. So tonight what we're going to do is we're not going to go through what we went through before. So this will be new for all of you. These are things that Minnie's been collecting since she stopped collecting. <laughs> well, this clock, um, crate, as you can see, is one of the things that I got a phone call one day from Bella, from Victoria, and she said, uh, I at the computer, I'm sending you a picture. Do you want this crate? What do I need a, another crate for? <laughs> and anyway, she told me how much, and I said, okay. You could get it for a little less, of course. Try. So I have the crate. It is a star spring water bottle crate. And uh, interestingly, 
A couple of days later on eBay, I got is that the next one? A label for the oh, star. Oh, nope, nope, the bottles are next. Oh, oh, sorry, we're mixed up here. <laughs> so anyway, I, the crate is wonderful. And uh, I, know, I knew very little about the star spray, but I since learned that it was just an orthopyrox spray and uh, it was found in 1784, which absolutely amazed me. That's pretty early. And it was owned by several different people along the way and called many things. It was called gunpowder spray because of a horrid odor. It was called the president, and then it was called the iodine. And then along with around 19, 1865, uh, Mr. Walton bought it, and uh, he changed the name to Star and built a beautiful bottling building. That was brick, right? That one. <laughs> no, well, I'm not sure. There were two bottling buildings there. One was white and early. And then, in, I don't know when, but Mr. Walton did build a beautiful brick building, which was at that time supposed to be the finest bottling works in town. But anyway, uh, the next day or two, I got the label. And I should say that in 1865, they were still bottling it, they started bottling it in these new, no, 1889, they started bottling it in these new modern bottles. And uh, I got a label to go on. And then, lo and behold, I got a bottle. So over, so over here we have bottles, the two early bottles, and then we have the newer bottle, and we have to, believe me, we have to crate. Thanks to Charlie. <laughs> Yeah, and we do want to invite people at the end of this tonight to come up and, and look at the different things that Minnie has brought that we're going to show you in slides today, including the, uh, the crate. And you can see how heavy the marble was that Charlie carried. And another thing about the crate, which is interesting, although I'm not terribly interested, it tells very explicitly inside who made the crate. It's in beautiful condition that it was made in Albany. And it was a, the star spring was bottled until 1915, when the state reservation came along and capped the spring, took over guys at uh, High Rock Park and closed all the springs. Well, you can see the difference in relationships that Minnie has with people. Victoria sends her a picture on the computer, and Minnie can't wait to open it. I tell her I'm going to send her a picture, and she logs off the computer. So. <laughs> well, dang. <laughs> crazy you know that <laughs> uh, right there with you Betty all right so so then I think well that's pretty cool so now she has this crate from the star spring and she has a label and she has bottles from the star spring and I don't think a week goes by and I get a phone call Dave guess what I have <laughs> what something new what's this one? Grand Union Marble well, this is very interesting. I was in Albany at the antique show, and I started talking to a man, and he had a name of a local fellow that I knew was no longer with us, so we started kidding about that. And he said, I used to work in Saratoga. And one thing led to another, and he found out that I collect Saratoga. So a few weeks later, a friend of mine from Troy came to visit and he had this piece of marble. The fellow from Albany had given it to him to give me. It's from the Graham Union Hotel. He got it at the site. So we know that. There is the picture of where the marble came from in the Grand Union. And we can show you a close up. That's exactly where the piece came from, right there. It's very interesting because there's there's no question it came from that that piece, and uh, he got it on the property that they built the gap on. 
on Broadway, which is no way there could be any place else. So I thought that was exciting. You know, I just thought of something. Over the years of collecting, what hotel do you have the most from? Is it the Grand Union? The most from? Oh, who knows? <laughs> I have, Dave, I have so much. And it isn't a matter of too, uh, what I have too much of, it's a matter of what I don't have much of. That's true. You know that. I do know one thing you're missing. Yes. Minnie has a... Um, Key rack. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, turn off her mic. <laughs> Minnie has a key rack, and she has on it keys to like every hotel you ever heard of in Saratoga Springs, even some that are quite remote, that you know were blocks off Broadway and things, like the Kensington, which was over on Union, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the one hotel key she's missing, and we want one of you to find one for her, <laughs> is the United States Hotel. I've tried, I've tried and tried, but I've never seen one. My, my theory on that is, it probably isn't true, but when, when they had the first sale of the furnishings of the United States Hotel, the truckloads went to Texas. And I, I can't, I know they took all kinds of things, but do they take the keys too? <laughs> I, I don't know, but there, there just aren't any around. Well, somebody must have one. We'll find one. Well, I saw one, but it's lost. Oh. I saw one, and it, it's disappeared. I've asked, and it's, he says it's disappeared. So I don't know how, where it is, but it's not important. I would just like it. <laughs> That'll give all of us something to do all winter, so we're looking for the United States, a key to one of the rooms in the United States Hotel, which, um, for those of you who aren't aware, it would have been where the old Borders building is now. Uh, what is that? Finger, finger paint is now. The whole block there. Yep, that whole block back into Franklin Square. Did I ever tell you what your friend Charlie did to me one time? No. So early on in our career, we were in a business like 15 years now, and when we used to do tours, I used to go on eBay. Little did I know that I was battling this one for Saratoga things. <laughs> but I used to go on and I'd find interesting things and I'd buy them, so I would bring them on the tour. Like I'd find a key, so I would bring it on the tour and I'd show people. So I think I must have annoyed my business partner because he shows up at a tour and all of a sudden he, he says to the group, hey, look what I've got. I've got a spoon from the Grand Union Hotel. And I said, really? And he takes out a spoon from the dollar store that he'd written on Grand Union Hotel. <laughs> so if he tells you he has a key to the United States, I would check it first. All right, one thing that Minnie and I uh, share that we have in common is that both of us have the same favorite hotel from 19th century Saratoga. And that would be this one, the Grand Central Hotel. And it was only around for a couple of years. It's very tragic, the whole story of the ending of the hotel and the fire that burned down. This would be today where the visitor center is, on that corner. Um, but you can get a sense of, and if you think about it, think where the visitor center is, and that would have been this hotel. And then right aco across Congress Street would have been the Grand Union Hotel, which was the largest hotel in the world. And across Broadway was Union Hall. That, well, across Broadway, Congress Hall, right? Congress Hall. Yeah, Congress Hall, right across the street. And as Charlie likes to say, on our tours we always notice that in the Grand Union, it's so big, they measure the carpet in there in acres. Just to get a sense of what these hotels were like. But the Grand Central, a little smaller than the Grand Union and of Congress, is the one that Minnie and I like the best. I think we both like kind of the architecture of it. It only had room for 500 guests. 500, yeah. As against the Grand Union. Yeah. So later on this summer, I get a call from Minnie, and it's like, Dave, guess what I've got? <laughs> this is the woman who I thought stopped collecting. And I said, I don't know. And she goes, you are going to love this. This is special because she knows how much I like this hotel. 
So, of course, I trot over, and she already had, from here, if you look in the picture on the right, the water pitcher. I had a pitcher and a spoon. And the spoon. But what she acquired this summer was what's on the left, and you can see engraved in all of them, Grand Central Saratoga. And what is that on the left? We well, we have a discussion about it. Dave thinks it's a sugar bowl. I don't know what it is, but it has a top, and it's a sugar bowl. But the the interesting <laughs> wow, are you saying I'm right? <laughs> I want this on tape. Oh, yeah. Uh, interestingly, I have to say it, this goes back to Victoria again. Uh, a very nice man came to my house, and uh, he was introduced by Victoria. And uh, he doesn't live here, he lives out near Syracuse. And uh, he had this packet, and he opened it up, and it was that, sugar roll. <laughs> and we, I just, I just couldn't believe it. You know, that hotel was only there two years. It burned in 1874, and I already had one piece, which was phenomenal. And now to get this. So he and I checked them both. They're made by the exact same company, and they both say Grand Central Hotel. He told me he acquired it out in Oneida, and uh, he only bought it because his sister was lived here, and he knew the name Saratoga. That was all. And lo and behold, he was willing for me to have it. It was, I thought it was, Fantastic. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> so we had three pieces from the Grand Central Hotel, and I've never seen any other. That's all I know about that. And, and I don't know, and some of you who are expert in collecting and things, uh, the piece is up here. You can come up and look at it afterward. The reason I, I ventured to guess that it might be a sugar ball is that there's a handle on both sides with the top, so it seemed to me to be easy to pass at a table. You know, as opposed to something you would just drink out of or something. So, well, I thought it was a tankard, but I guess that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what does that say? Okay, so <laughs> now I, I don't know if I ever asked you this. Why was the Grand Central your favorite? Well, I think it's beautiful. Yeah. And I think the story, which is in my second book, by the way, of, of its being there such a short time, and and. And burning, it just, the whole thing just fascinated me. I, I just can't imagine standing there and watching that burn. It's it just, it just don't, I don't understand it. Mm. And I'm delighted to have those three pieces. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, you think about a hotel from, uh, that burned in 1874. Actually, this is almost the anniversary. I think it was October 1st uh, from your book. It, it was supposedly, from that story, it was the day it was to close. Yeah. Um, but a hotel that burned to the ground that many years ago, and one person has three pieces of what would have been <laughs> saved from that fire. That's, of you course, know, it would be many. But. The story tells, tells how there were things sitting out on the road, and, and all this furniture, and everything was just in place. So how, how did those three pieces the spoon, I suppose somebody took before. I don't know, but it's uh, just all amazes me. I love the picture. I love the picture of the building. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you something else I just thought of. When you get old pieces like this, do you ever like um, try to clean them off of all oh, the years? No. no, no, not those pieces. Does that damage them? Or? Might take the name off, who knows? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't. I mean, if it was sterling silver, yes, right. I'd, I'd polish it. Okay. These are just things that pop in my head. Okay, next. We thought we should put something in, like celebrating the 150th anniversary of Saratoga Racing they this year. So. <laughs> All right, maybe I thought so. <laughs> Jeez. Um, and this is an example of a board that bookies would have used uh, around the track. Um, I need a volunteer for a minute. Could you hold this for a second? 
Feel free to sing if you like. <laughs> Jamie, thank you. Uh, Jamie, you want to talk about this while I get Well, I, I don't really see, can you get it out of it? I don't see much to talk about. It's a, a, a booking handbook. Well, well, we didn't have parimutuel vetting, so... No, there was, of course, no parimutuel vetting, and people, the bookies st stood around wherever they stood. I, I know I'm old enough, but I don't remember seeing them. But he wants me to hold this up. And just I think anyone who has a camera, this will be a classic picture. Oh, honestly. I... <laughs> I just think he thinks it would be a good picture to have this. So this is Minnie the Bookie. <laughs> well, it's a pretty good one, and it was damaged here. I don't know what was on here, but those are the odds for the race. And the, and the man's name was Heidemann, and it's on both sides. So it is an interesting thing, but certainly interesting name anyway. Yeah. But it doesn't well, that's because I know what a keen observer of the racetrack you are. <laughs> I was. I, I, in fact, I went to the racetrack in 1938, the first time I went to the races, but I certainly didn't see a bookie. <laughs> oh, that's I remember that's it. not what Mr. Heinemann said. <laughs> anyway, oh. that, it, it is a nice object, and I have never seen another one. No. Maybe there are, but I... It just looked natural to most of us in your hand. <laughs> Again, I say you're crazy. <laughs> well, I have proof. I have proof right here, Minnie, a picture you haven't seen yet, that uh, Minnie gets inside information from the top jockeys. There's a picture of you up there with Javier Castellano right now. <laughs> oh, look! <laughs> you know, uh, is that the day they gave me his name to race after me? I think it's one day you and Javier were just out to dinner or something. <laughs> Oh, yeah. That was an interesting day, and I was terribly surprised my family did that. And from the day, word go, other than the fact that I was going to the races, I knew nothing about it. And when I heard I have to walk down to the winner's circle, I was aghast. And then when I got down there, my whole family was there, which amazed me, because they're not racetrack fans. And then after the race, this very nice little jockey came over and he gave me a big hug and somebody said, you know, she's 90. And he turned around and gave me a kiss <laughs> and, and said, God bless you. So that's him. And he was a very nice young man. Yes, yes. This may be the engagement picture that ends up in the paper. <laughs> And I, I have to add, after that episode at the track, my niece drove me home in a very circuitous way, and I kept prompting her, you're going too slow. We're going out to dinner, you're going too slow. And she took me to her house, and uh, I refused to get out of the car because I thought we were going out to dinner. And, <laughs> Finally, they insisted, and I walked into about 60 or 70 people for a dinner. It, it was just fantastic, a wonderful day. I thank you. Now, anyone who knows Minnie well, and I kick myself for this, we all should have had the winner this year. Was it the Travers? No. What was the race that? Uh, Fitch. What, what? It was the Minnie Clark Monster. No, 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 this year. Remember the horse who won this year? Oh, you said yeah. to me, I would have bet that if yeah. I was there. We'll take charge. We'll take charge. <laughs> you get the message. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe I didn't play that. By the way, he just won a big race down in Blackwood or someplace. See, but she doesn't follow races. <laughs> <laughs> you believe whichever one of us you want. <laughs> Only horses that I would have bet, should have bet. <laughs> Wait till I show you the picture next time we do this of her with her little green visor on, sitting at the table with a racing court. Okay, Charlie. All right, I can't, I'm not even going to try anymore to say this word. Uh, this is a poster that Minnie has. The actual poster is over there on the left. 
It means stuff. I'll tell you, you know, Dave has trouble with this word, ephemera. I can't understand it. He's a teacher for some reason. He knows, and he looks at the darn thing all the time, and I have to tell you, ephemera is defined as printed or written material which was intended to be transitory in nature. I call them throwaways. <laughs> then why can't I call it that? I don't know why. <laughs> you always make me say that word. I don't know how to say it. But my poster is a picture of many of pieces of ephemera that I have from back in the 1800s. Do you have any of those throwaways that are special favorites? You know, like uh, something that would go in that category, but it's kind of... Oh, I kind of like all of them. I love the trade cards. Trade cards were all very... This is interesting, too. The trade cards were all so colorful, and actually what they were were advertising cards. And again, everybody today has business cards. And thanks to Victoria, I have about 2,500 of them. <laughs> Which I hope 50 years from now, people are going to enjoy them as much as the ephemera that I collected. <laughs> You know what story you have to tell real quick about the postcards? Oh, that's fun. One of my first experiences, and probably the funniest thing that ever happened to me, uh, I had a fellow that, he was a picker. At that time, we didn't call him that, but he was a picker. And he used to bring all kinds of things that I could buy or not buy. And he thought I was really crazy to be collecting postcards. <laughs> This is back in about 1958, and uh, so I used to talk about the postcards all the time, and uh, he, he used to say, you know, I know a fellow up in the country who's got some, but I can't get him to sell them. So after much of that, he called one day and he says, he's ready to sell them to you. Come on up. So I get my mother and my friend in the car, and we go up in the woods behind Hudson Falls someplace. I have to find it again. <laughs> and there's a very nice old house in the country, and a man sitting on the porch. And I got out of the car, and I went over, and uh, he's got all these boxes around him. And I, he said, there they are. And I looked at them. And, a few minutes, there were about four or five cartons, and uh, I said, how much do you want for them? And he said, 50 bucks. And I said, oh, okay, I'll take them. And he said, oh, wait a minute, that's not all. And he took me to the cellar, and there was about eight more cartons. <laughs> I got, at least, before we got through, I bought these boxes that they put them in, and I got 10,000 cards <laughs> for 50 bucks. <laughs> Never happened again. <laughs> Never. And incidentally, there was only one Saratoga card in it. <laughs> and which was all right, because as you ever, I, I'm amazed that I'm thinking of this, but it was this room in the casino, but it was one of those pictures called Copper, picture, Copper, I forgot what they're called, but they have, uh, designs around the windows and, and they're in copper color. It's a beautiful card. Still, I still have it. And uh, all the other cards were, were signed or uh, Memorial Day cards and things like that that you just don't see anymore. So I made my $50 back. <laughs> How long does it take you to go through 10,000 cards? A month. <laughs> <laughs> but I know today that you have lots of Saratoga postcards, too. Oh, I have a lot. Now I probably have 35, 30, 3,000 or 4,000. Three or 4,000. Yeah. And do you have a, a favorite subject in a postcard? No, I like them all. Yeah. Can't think of any. Nope. But uh, you, well, you all look at postcards. You've certainly seen them all, but I do enjoy the, the ones of the interiors of the buildings because it shows you just what they look like. I am laughing. 
Because I just said, is there anyone you like more than the others? And you said no. Then you said, I like the interior. <laughs> <laughs> I do like them. They, they are beautiful. They show what the buildings look like right. inside, which is interesting. Now, just out of curiosity, uh, from a value point of view, are they more valuable if they're not written on or if they were actually Oh, I don't think it matters. It never mattered to me. I, I like to see the date on them, yeah. but uh, I just like the cards. Okay. Now, Minnie also has a collection of signs. Um, the signs we're looking at now, Minnie, are, say, Stuart Milk, Stuart's Milk, and then a giant ice cream cone. How did those come about? Well, uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess I sold my house, and I started putting signs on the back porch. And I, I have some wonderful signs back there that you wouldn't believe. But one day, I didn't have any room, and I had a chance to buy a barber pole. And it was uh, from Tony Sansevieri's up on Five Points. And uh, I called him up and asked him what he was going to do with it because he, he was retiring. And he said, well, I'm going to sell it. And I said, well, I want it. <laughs> so I bought the barber pole and I had no place to put it. So I got someone to put walls in my garage. It didn't have whatever you call that kind of wall. and. Uh, I had the barber pole installed, and it lights and circles, and it's wonderful. And with it, I got the two sides that went with his shop. So all of a sudden, I was collecting sides, and I have a couple hundred in there yeah. now. <laughs> and uh, I think this one's interesting. Um, I bought this at an antique show in Albany, and. Uh, uh, many, uh, many, most of you know that Dakes owned Stewart's ice cream. And uh, before Dakes owned it, it was owned by a man in Boston. And his name was, his name was Don Stewart. And he had a wagon. Now, I, I heard this from the girl I bought it from. And it had a sign, that sign, on each side of the wagon. I have tried to find a picture of the wagon, but I haven't been able to yet. And the girl that got it, that I bought it from, got it from the lady who was using it as a shelf in her cellar. <laughs> and luckily, she did. She just was turned over, so the side didn't get ruined. And uh, she said there were two of them, one on each side, and she was very elderly, one on each side of his wagon. And uh, I said, well, I wonder who's got the other one? And she said, uh, she told me that it's in Tokyo. <laughs> now, that seems very far-fetched. However, the lady's son moved to Tokyo, and he took it with him. So. That's the only one. It's the only one in North America. <laughs> and I, I felt very lucky to be able to get the, the last one there, the ice cream cone, because that's kind of a thing out of all their buildings. So that's how I got that. Yeah. And now you have over 200 signs. Yep. Is there anything that you started collecting that you got like three of and said, OK, that's enough? Oh, everything. <laughs> But I never stopped. No, you never stopped. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't, don't bring me anything more because I have no more room. <laughs> You're yeah, putting an addition on the house. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, no. <laughs> now, was there any ever anything, many that you really wanted and you couldn't get? Just that hotel. Just. <laughs> <laughs> and. <laughs> I really, uh, I'll tell you, the story is, I saw the keys on, in the frame on a lady's wall. Her husband and I worked together, and uh, I tried for 20 years to get her to sell it to me. And she wouldn't, didn't want to. 
And after she died, I waited about a year, and I asked her son, and he said, oh, I remember that. He says, all the keys, they're still hanging here, but that one disappeared. So it disappeared from their wall. Whether he'll find it in a drawer or in the attic or what, I don't know. But he knows I'd like it, and it's the only one I've ever seen. So that's the story of the key. <laughs> it's unusual, too, because that hotel was in town until 1946-47. So it's not like it's been 150 years since it was gone. So I'm sure that there's a key to that hotel out there somewhere. I think those Texans took them with them. The Texans. <laughs> I, I don't know, but I really like one. I don't have room for it on the keyboard, but, <laughs> but I'd like I'm one. sure you'd make room. You know, Dave, I do have something from there. I have a waiter's button. It's like, it looks like a sheriff's badge. It's silver, and it says U.S. Hotel with, uh, I don't know, a number, I guess. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, so I do have that. Hmm. Yeah, of course you do. All right. Um, all right, now, Minnie has authored three different books over the last few years. How many, when did you start writing? Uh, I, I published the first one, I think, in 95. 95. I think, I don't know. No, I published those signs, those posters first. Anyway, I've written three books in the last eight years, whatever. Okay, one book is called the Saratoga Original. It's a story of Clarence Knapp. Very fascinating man. Yep, and uh, was he, he was mayor, right? He was mayor, and he was the original curator for the racing museum. The race, but it was right here. Yeah, the racing museum started here. So see, there's another tie-in to the 150th. Yeah, <laughs> the racing museum, which is now up on Union Avenue, I think from 51 or two up to 55, was based in this building, and then they moved up the street to Union Avenue. Uh, and then Minnie wrote um, my favorite book on Saratoga history, which is Saratoga, The Way We Were and What They Said About you Us. You know, the reason he likes that is because I didn't really write that. That's, <laughs> that's, that's not true. That's really a compilation of newspaper articles with my comment. Yeah, but what Minnie did was she painstakingly went through all of these old archival newspapers and things, and then she pulled out all these interesting accounts of what Saratoga was like in, back in this time period in the 19th century. And then to put it in context, she would put it in mini language so that you would understand what you were reading. And had you, what are you laughing at? So if you didn't, if you hadn't explained it like that and put it in context, the, the book would be tough to understand. Thank you. I think it's a wonderful book. Thank you. And then on the right, how'd that get up there? <laughs> on the on the right is a book that uh, Charlie Kenzel and I just just wrote. What happened to my third book? <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're here, you know, collecting. <laughs> I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I, his, his, he and Charlie wrote a very delightful book, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Dave. Oh, Minnie. <laughs> All right, Minnie, there is your book, Collecting Saratoga, The Adventures of Minnie Clark Bolster, which I believe also was on the cover slide this evening. Was it? Yes. I did see the cover slide. So this is the third time we've seen it. <laughs> That's fine. Anyway, it's been fun writing uh, these books, and I enjoy them, and enjoy writing them. I hope you all like to read them. I don't know. Uh, I have to tell you, that, is that mine up there now? Which one? The last one. Yes. Well, did you see me in the car? Can you see me in the car? Yeah, not really. Let's see if I can get over there. If you look right down here, that's Minnie's car as she's driving around Saratoga, looking for sales. Well, when, when my friend who helped me with the books, he designed the cover and everything, 
he had a picture of the car, very large, with me in it. And I said to her, you know, my name is in the title, and my name is in the author, and do I need a picture of me on the cover, too? So she made it smaller under protest. And then when I changed it to write, instead of saying it was by my name, I said by herself. She, put it, <laughs> she was upset because she would have liked it out there larger. But it's kind of funny, I think. No, I think it's great. I think it's perfect. The Adventures of Collecting Saratoga, The Adventures of Minnie Clark Bolster by Herself. <laughs> It's very mini-like. Yeah. You're crazy. I, that's the third time you've said that. He's lots of fun, though. Uh, anyway, the point I wanted to make when we were getting over here, and the, one of the reasons I included the book that Charlie and I just wrote, was because I wanted to share this with everybody, this one part uh, that Charlie and I wrote together. This is the dedication of our book. To Minnie Clark Bolster, a Saratogian through and through, who has worked tirelessly to tell many generations the wonderful story of Saratoga Springs. This book is dedicated with great respect and affection. See? Thank you. And it's in writing. And, uh, and it, it, it was a complete surprise and, and very nice of them. Well, we just think you're a Saratoga treasure. You know that. Thank you. <laughs> And I would rather have a conversation with you than the key to the United States Hotel. <laughs> um, at the conclusion of the program tonight, there will be an opportunity if anybody wants for, Minnie's going to sign books and things, and she has, we have copies of all of her books with us if anybody would like, and uh, Charlie and I have ours down here too. Uh, next slide, Charlie. Oh, the next adventure, because remember, she's not collecting anymore. What's my next adventure? See that poster way over there? Where'd you get that? Oh, that's, that's interesting. I forgot yes. you had yeah. that with it. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> we got time? Oh, sure. Uh, a lady, a, a dealer that I know called me from out of town and said, I have something for you. So she brought it, and it was that picture. And it's a wonderful, does it show on the screen? Uh, not the whole thing like that. Can you everyone see that on the far right we're looking at? This is a, a newspaper. Uh, what do you call that, a broadsheet? Well, it apparently is a broadside because broadside. it has a fine red border all around it. And it was, uh, I think, uh, pub published, printed, to put in places that the water, geyser water, was sold. And uh, it, it's a very interesting article. It gives the history of the spring. And uh, it just came along after I got my idea of what I'd want to write about next. And that's the Geyser Park. And uh, I don't know whether any of you have been down there lately, but it is still the most peaceful, quiet place you could imagine. And uh, most people don't know that it was a village. And there were houses and businesses. Well, just so people know in context, this is down into where the state park is today, down in the Saratoga State Park. How many remember the Geyser Village? Anyone remember it? Anyone ever? I can't. This is amazing. I, I don't expect anyone here to uh, remember the Geyser Village, but the Geyser, when I was young, it, it was a treat to be taken down to the geyser to have spring water, which I still drink, by the way. And uh, it's just such a wonderful, peaceful, quiet place. But it was, in those years, early years, a village with houses, a school. I, I'm not sure about a schoolhouse, but there were, there were garage businesses there, and there was a uh, Sadly, those gas companies came along and kind of usurped it. But before that, it was a village. People lived there. I know them. I knew a, a man who had a farm there, and that was in about 1932. I remember going down there, and uh, although Dee Sweeney isn't here tonight, she and I discussed this, and she remembers going down there to visit people. So I just think it would be fun to uh, find out exactly what 
what was down there or try to write about it because as you not see, nobody remembers it. How many are surprised to know that that existed in the state park? Yeah, I was too when Minnie first told me. I, I think it's, uh, Minnie is park detective because she gets onto something and then she has to keep exploring it until she can find all the answers. But I think this is fascinating. So in addition to the United States Hotel Key, <laughs> you're also looking for any information on the geysers. And you know, uh, in, uh, speaking about my first book, Mr. Knapp, he has, I still had his scrapbooks, and there's a great deal of information that I didn't put in the book. Uh, he talks about an actor who came to Saratoga back in the, in the late 1800s, and uh, who lived down there, and there's a picture of the man and a picture of his house, and it was a brick house, and it was in the geyser. So it wasn't just a couple of houses, and there must be somebody out there that, anybody older than me here? <laughs> I don't know, but it's fascinating, and I would like to know more about the geyser, and how it got, ruined by the gas companies. Well, for those of you who aren't familiar, by 1900, we had about 200 springs running in the village, in Saratoga Springs. And one of the big fascinations as we came into the 20th century was uh, soda fountains. And National Carbonic Gas Company set up shop up by the uh, dance, hall, or dance museum, and they started pumping huge amounts of spring water out of the ground to capture the gas. All they wanted was the gas. They were discarding the water. They pumped so much water out, they lowered the water table of a lot of the springs. We almost lost all of our springs back then. So, and they owned 21 acres up there. So they had quite a sizable piece. Well, there was several of those gas companies, but um, there was one on the Lake of Bath right. property. And then eventually, of course, what happens is the state of New York came in and they end up building the state reservation, which we now know as Saratoga State Park. And then they bought all our springs, including High Bar Park, which had several springs on it, and the ones downtown, and the ones in the Kaiser. Right. But what, what many has found so far, if I can share this, if I can't just kick me like you <laughs> usually do, um, she has found, um, going through old files, how the State Reservation Commission in the from like 1910 to 1930 were buying up properties of people who lived in the geyser. Right? Well, I'm trying to, to, to pinpoint whether if, it, if they paid them or if they just took them. And I recently got, well, I have to tell you this as long as you brought it up. And, and uh, my, my uncle, I had an uncle who was a policeman and uh, he was a motorcycle cop. And I remember him coming home one day and saying to my aunt, I need a sock. She says, what are you doing home? You're, you know, he's working. And he said, well, I need, a, I need to take, get a sock. I'm going down to the geyser. So he took a sock, and when he came home, it was full of money. Now, I don't say it was gold coins, but it was coins money. And recently, now I remember that, so I know it happened, but recently on eBay, I got a picture showing people digging in the geyser for, for money. Apparently, some of the houses, the people didn't believe it, it banks, and they, put, they, they had their money stashed in their houses. And, and I know that happened, so if it happened one place, maybe it happened other places. Well, great. Now I know where 200 people are going to be this weekend. <laughs> oh, Dave. Eh, uh, maybe. <laughs> All right, now, uh, we've left some time here deliberately. If people have questions they wanted to ask Minnie about any of her collecting or anything, uh, who has a question? Look at this. You've stunned them into silence. Susan. Uh, Susan's asking if Minnie and George will work together on any aspect of Saratoga history. Well, no. <laughs> George was my husband's brother. I was collecting long before I was married. 
And what else can I say? Uh, George collected the photographs. I collected everything. <laughs> so I, I never worked with it. I bought pictures from him, and I enjoyed looking at them, but I, I never worked with it. Did you get clues from his work on things that you were interested in? And did you get clues from any of his pictures or work on things you were interested in? Well, I think his pictures, especially the ones that he had colored, are, are absolutely yeah. wonderful. And I enjoy them all the time and like to see them all over. But, uh, and, and they certainly showed me things that maybe I didn't know, I don't know. Someone tells us all. Um, I, I just wanted to say, I was at the um, MoMA yesterday in New York, and there's an exhibit of photographs, and there was a woman staring at a photograph that was Broadway in the big hotels, but it obviously had been raining, and she thought it was Venice, or she thought it was Holland, and I just happened to be standing next to her saying, no, rainy day, Broadway, Sarah Jobin, she was so delighted. Know what this was by Walker Evans. Yeah, it was a Walker picture, yeah. yeah. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to know which spring the mini drinks are. Ooh. So I know. Doesn't she look great for 130? <laughs> huh? Nothing. <laughs> so, so the question in the front was Minnie had said earlier that every week she drinks the spring water. So, of course, now we're curious which spring water do you drink? All of them. All of them. Anyone I could get to. Do you have a favorite? No. Do you have any that you don't like? No. <laughs> no. I, I, I guess it's because I've been drinking them all my life. I love the spring water at camp every week. And one reason it takes me to the every week is we just argue about which one to go to. <laughs> the guy, the one down on High Rock is, is very good, but the one on the corner of Spring Street we like better. And then once in a while we get down to the geyser and they're all, there's three or four down there that we drink one after another. And I know some people say that you shouldn't drink too much of it, but it doesn't bother me. I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I never, never have understood the pictures and the stories about the Victorian people making faces because it's so horrid. and only drinking it because it was the thing to do, because I think they're all very tasty. Mm. But that's me. Mm. <laughs> Who else has a question? Back here. Yes, sir. Uh, I recall uh, from some things I read at Yano that Spencer Trask was on the commission, and he was on route, I think it was 1909, New Year's Eve 1909, to return to New York to proofread the commission's report. Mm -hmm. Now, many, did you recall running into his name associated with commission minutes? Uh, running into his name to do with what? Okay, so John wants to know, um, remember like Spencer Trask, New Year's Eve 1909, is called down to, because he's on the commission to save the springs, and he along with a the governor of New York, who happened to be from Glens Falls, Charles Hughes, and a senator named Edgar Truman Brackett, put together legislation that ended up saving the strings, uh, springs. What John wants to know is, have you come across Spencer Trask's name as you're going through reservation things? Oh, yes. And especially since the things I've been reading recently, um, because he was very involved and, and probably is the one who started pushing to do it because he wanted to get rid of, of uh, the gas houses. However, he also wanted to get rid of gambling, which he didn't manage. Yeah, and Chase Canfield out of town. But uh, I read everything I can about Trask, and, and uh, uh, there are several, there's lots of wonderful books about. Yeah, the whole of Trask, and uh, uh, there's a, a man who used to come to Saratoga, he, he comes very often to research him, and uh, he's written several, four or five, I think, books about Saratoga, about Yaddle, period. That's what he cares about. And in there, there's loads of things about Trask, and, and uh, 
he's a very interesting man. It would be interesting to find out really what was going on, why he was going down there on Christmas or New Year's Eve or whatever. It's, 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 it's an interesting subject, and I do read about him. I think one thing we take for granted, those of us who live in Saratoga Springs now, is that you know, really in the 19th century, and even earlier than that, seven different U.S. presidents were here. Uh, Rockefeller, Vanderbilt, Stanford, all summered in Saratoga Springs. Uh, James Fenimore Cooper, Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, and people came up here for the season, for the three months. Spencer Trask, one of the wealthiest men in America, uh, chose here to establish his second home. He was from uh, Brooklyn, I think, originally. His father lived here ahead of him. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He had an adjoining estate, I think, right? His father lived on what we know as the Whitney property, yeah. which now belongs to the Sheikh of Dubai. <coughs> and uh, especially after visiting him often, he bought the adjacent property from Barheim. And uh, as we all know, it's a beautiful estate. It really is. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, as a tourist to Saratoga Springs for the first time, I've had a question that's been on my mind, which is obviously very basic, but I'll ask it anyway. Did the Grand Union and the United States hotels have <coughs> elevators? Uh, did the Grand Union and the United States hotels have elevators? I know the Grand Union did because one of the first Otis elevators was in the Grand Union. Yes, and that's still in existence. It's in Pennsylvania, it's right? It's in Pennsylvania, yeah. and the last time I read about it, it was being stored, and they were going to build a building to put it in because of its size. It was huge, <laughs> and it was the first one, first Otis of, of that size. Yeah. So I know of that one. I don't know if the United States. Has. I don't. I don't know either. Mm -hmm. You know, the United States. The United States was kind of. What do I want to say? When, when you walk down Broadway, you could walk into the Grand Union. It had a few steps, and the lobby was right there. But the the United States, you had to walk those very tall. <laughs> stairs, and it, it, I guess it wasn't as inviting, and they probably didn't want people walking in either, right. but I was only in there once. I had met some people on vacation that rode home with them, and they left things in my car, and I had to take them in, and therefore I was in the lobby, and that's, that's all I remember about that hotel. It just wasn't as inviting to the general public. And it's very sad that we have none of the great hotels left, but if you um, if you get a chance, uh, old movies, there's one called Saratoga with Clark Gable, and oh, what was her name? Jean Harlow. Jean Harlow's last movie, she died during the filming. And another movie called Saratoga Trunk with Gary Cooper, Ingrid Berg, they were shot, parts of them, up here, and they have scenes from like the United States Hotel, the lobby, the front porch, because these giant piazzas, these front porches that they had, is where, you know, this is the days prior to air conditioning. This is where most of the business was done, where wealthy people came to marry off their kids to other wealthy people. Um, the Grand Union Piazza could hold 500 rocking chairs. I mean, these are big places. Anyone else have a question? Do you have any questions, Vinny? I have no questions for nothing else to say. Oh. Yes. Hi. Do you know how many hotel rooms we had back in the 1800s as a comparison to today? Bonnie would like to know, do you know how many hotel rooms we used to have compared to what we have today? Well, I, I can't keep track of today. They add, they add them so fast. So I really don't know, but I, I know uh, most of the great, there's always been a discussion about which was the biggest hotel. And, but both the Grand Union and the states could take care of about 800 pe people each. each. And then, of course, there was all the other, uh, everybody had rooms to rent. And lots of bed and breakfast, they didn't call them 
Well, they didn't call a bed breakfast. They just had sides up that there were rooms for rent. And uh, then there was a uh, file street was filled with hotels. And uh, there were several on Spring Street, the Rose Inn, and uh, then there was the Lafayette. There were so many hotels. I, I, and the Hillwind, which is up on Circular Street, that's still there, just the, the building. So it's, uh, it's, I don't know. But I, I would say, for the number of people that visited, we had enough for the bed. Well, actually, we have somebody with us who I know knows the answer to that who I'm going to plug in a second. Um, but uh, Minnie mentioned Philo Street. Here's one thing that I know she's run into, and I think everybody who does any kind of historic research will find. Uh, Charlie and I were doing research on something one day, and we found an account of Philo Street, and the person had written, this is from the 1880s, Philo, parentheses, Philadelphia Street. Oh, I have to go all the time. And for years, other people picked up on that, and they started, the, the word was out that Philo Street was named for the city of Philadelphia, 2,800 people. And then we would have about 40 other hotels. Yeah. Today, in the county, we have... I think it's 3,600, 3,400 in the whole county. We, we have around 1,843 rooms in Saratoga. We have about 1,800 rooms in Saratoga, about 3,400 in the county. We had more within three blocks in 1875 than we have in the county today. We were a popular city. We yes. were a popular city, and we still are. Somebody else wanted a question. Yes. Somebody else had a question? Yes, ma'am. Actually, in the museum over here, it has a quote from the 1870 census which says that there were something like 7,500 people living year-round and that there were 26,000 rooms available. And that was putting everything, boarding sure. houses, hotels, whatever. 26,000 rooms available in 1870 in Saratoga. And they're still coming. And they're still coming. We're at the, we were at the Disney World of the 1880s. And if you think about it, think back just 15 years ago. Jamie will remember this, when Disney World in Florida was going to add a new section, they could have called it Cincinnati, Los Angeles, Greenfield. No, they called it Saratoga Springs. I, I have souvenirs from there, too. Yes, yes you, of course you do. <laughs> and I remember, because I was at the museum then working with Jamie, remember they came up and they wanted pictures and all this, and I mean, that's quite a tribute to our community, that of all the places they could have picked, they pick Saratoga Springs as the name of their... Well, there's no site. better place. There is no better place. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Well, thank you all very much for coming.